that need to be in order before you get ready to closing. As a reminder to all the attendees, we're giving away iPads. Do your entries to get the iPad and we will get those given out, I think, tomorrow um, at the close of the session. So again, Scott Smith, welcome to the stage, my friend. Tell us about your background and what sort of documents and financials that we need to stay organized with. Yeah, guys, so there's, uh, there's quite a few things that you need to know about when it comes into uh, documents and financials you need <clears throat> uh, to exit. Um, but you can really wrap that up in a, in a few uh, quick pieces here. So um, what I'm going to talk to you guys is about uh, what the document financials need to look like and really like what are the big things that we have to know about when we're exiting, right? So um, if you guys don't know me, uh, my name is Scott Royal Smith. I'm an attorney as well as longtime real estate investor. Um, I help clients all over the country in every single state um, in asset protection, which is my core focus. And the reason why asset protection is my core focus uh, whenever I started my journey to be able to help investors um, is because it's the number one thing that people don't understand how to use it as a tool to be able to um, make yourself uh, have the best returns possible, right? So when you're thinking about exiting a property, not only do you need to have the, the proper sales agreement and the proper financials, you need to be thinking about all the things that can go wrong in the exit that could have blowback on you. And I'm going to be talking about a little bit more um, of those in a minute and ways that easy steps that you can do to be able to prevent um, from that happening to you. So for you guys to know how important this is, um, I had a friend of mine who had uh, lost over $3 million in assets uh, from a deal that went bad. And he was very well insured. And it was, all of his real estate portfolio got wiped out from a single lawsuit and his insurance company essentially just left him holding the bag saying, you know, we're not going to cover that. He didn't know what a lot of people don't know is that insurance companies are in the business of collecting premiums and denying coverage. And, and what that really means at the end of the day is that you're kind of on your own. You hope other people step in to protect you, but you're really on your own. But the great news is, is that you don't have to be uh, alone and, you know, totally uh, unprepared. If you take proactive steps, um, you're going to be able to have a lot more success and you can protect yourself from things going sideways on you. And you can actually do things that can make you completely litigation proof, meaning that if anybody ever tries to sue you, they get little to nothing. And that's what we're going to be talking about here today. So that way, when you have your great exits, right, and you're making all this money, you make sure to keep the money because it's not about how much you make, it's how much you keep at the end of the day. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick this off and do a little screen share with you guys and walk you through a slideshow presentation that I prepared for you. Um, it's going to go through a couple key major parts to it that I want to share with you guys. We're going to first talk about um, what are the documents that you're going to need to have in order um, into your exit. And then we're also going to talk a lot about um, how do you actually make sure that after you do the exit um, and before you do the exit, how do you make sure you don't lose your money, right? And that those are the things that are going to tie into where asset protection is going to come um, really needed. So we also have, um, I, I don't know if the audience has the ability to, but on my screen, um, there's also a chat box available. So drop your questions in the chat. If like there's anything that comes up into your mind, they're like, hey, I want to know about this or what about this type of situation that could come up? I love the hypotheticals. Throw them at me to be able to do it. Um, inside of my firm, I have a big staff of about 40 people that does almost all of the day-to-day -day operations. So um, on most of the time, I'm not really meeting with clients one-on-one -on -one all that often anymore. All I do, I do make myself available for any single person um, that is a member of the firm um, that we've set up um, their piece for them and we help them do all of their real estate transactions and whatnot. Um, but uh, I love being able to have the opportunity to come here and talk with you guys here today. Um, about uh, anything that you want to know about. So um, just a little background on the types of deals I've been exposed to. I'm personally invested in over 10 different states at any given time. I invest in every single type of real estate asset. Uh, we have about 3,000 clients who are members of Royal Legal Solutions um, that live all across the country. So I've been in and out, in and out of more deals than I can possibly count. Um, I've seen it go every which way um, that you can imagine. So there's nothing in here that I'm not going to feel comfortable to be able to answer for you guys both on how do we exit the deals, what are the documents of our financials we're going to need, um, as well as asset protection or real estate in general. I'm an open book for you guys um, to be able to dive into anything that you need. I'm, I'm here for you 100%, okay? So all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pop in uh, to the screen share so that way we can uh, just kick things off and I can start showing you guys some of these visuals that are going to be um, great to be able to uh, help you there. So, all right. 
Excellent. Okay, cool. So um, I think everybody now should be able to see, uh, see my screen um, as we get going here. Um, that is my beautiful face down here at the bottom, the uh, Scott Royal Smith Esquire. Very, very attorney-like. Um, when I'm not doing my attorney work and building Royal Legal Solutions, into one of the fastest growing law firms in the country. Um, I'm on doing dirt biking and doing canyoneering out in Zion, um, taking trips in my, I have built a sprinter into a travel van and I go with my dog uh, to, to be able to go camping and be able to explore some of the time in nature and rejuvenate. Um, so um, I'm much more um, into being able to, you know, use the other things that are around here in life, you know, use my relationships, use my experiences in nature to help inform, um, enrich my mind to be able to come and be able to present um, to you guys here today. So um, I, I'm sure you guys are into some amazing stuff too. And I just wanted to share with you a little bit about me before we get going. So the thing, the key pieces that we have here, uh, I just want to lie them out for you. So here's the three main things that you need when you exit. You need a seller's agreement and you want to use as is language. You want to have an indemnity clause limiting the scope of any lawsuit and you need to have your financials, which would favor your negotiation position. There's, these are the main documentation that you're going to need uh, when you come into being able to sell the properties uh, for anybody. So with that seller agreement, needs to look like when you're using the as is language is that it needs to not be more than just saying something is as is, right? So what that means is that you actually need to be looking um, for more thorough explanations. So there's a couple of ways that you can get what those more thorough um, descriptions or explanations of what as is means and include that into your contract. Um, and the way to do that would be a couple of different ways. One, you could go on the royallegalsolutions.com website and we have all the language that I use for my deals up there. Um, I'm not your attorney, so if that goes sideways on you, don't think you can sue me because you got bad advice from me um, into it, right? Until you're a member of Royal Legal Solutions and I'm looking at your deal specifically, um, then I'm not your attorney, okay? But all that being said, I put up all the information that I know, everything in the world that I know makes it up on the website. Uh, because I believe that what we should be doing as attorneys is, is giving all of the secrets away. And that's what I do time and time again. I just want to give all the secrets away, educate people as much as I can about the stuff that I've known from my six plus years of being a real estate investor and attorney um, and being able to just give that all to you. And the number one thing that I've learned is that when you just say something is as is whenever you're selling a property, it doesn't really have much legal effect. You actually need to describe all of the things that as is really means. And so you can either take that from the royallegalsolutions.com website or what you can do is just go talk to a local attorney and get that information from them or find somebody who's got an agreement from another attorney and steal that language and or, or model that language uh, from their agreement um, if nobody saw, if you're just listening on audio, I put some air quotes in there about model because we're not allowed to steal things when it comes to that, right? But we can model it. Um, but come on. The reality is, guys, is that what you do is you use any, you, you decide on what you can spend. And if you can't spend a lot of money, then what you do is you find the smartest people you can find, take their stuff, educate yourself as much as you can, and you make your best call on what that's going to be. If you have some more money, that's when you bring in an attorney. And why do you bring in an attorney? Well, one, you got to have an attorney that also is in the same business you're in. And the second thing, the reason that you do that is because now somebody else's, you know, butt is on the line for making sure things are right. Because when it goes wrong, what you do is you turn around, you can look at your attorney and be like, hey, how did you screw that up? Because you screwed that up. I lost all this money. So you're actually responsible for it. This is why attorneys have malpractice insurance is because they have to be right. Um, so when you that's why at the higher levels of the game, why you want to loop an attorney into here, especially when it's coming into something important as an as is language. So I gave you a ton of information just now about as is language, but I didn't actually tell you um, why, why you need that language. And the reason why you need it is because what it does is it shuts off the liability once you sell the property in most cases, right? What, if, you, if you don't have as is language into your contract, what you're doing is you're opening up all kinds of implied warranties about the condition of the property, right? And those are things that can be read in, not even into the contract. They're things that are read and buried inside of the case law. Um, so you might not even know what all the implied warranties are that you're giving to somebody when you sell a piece of property, but a clever attorney would know. But if you put the as is language into the contract, then what you do is, as you cut off all of that, all you're saying is like the property is what it is. The only things I'm guaranteeing to you are what is exactly inside of this contract. Um, and so that way you know that going forward, you're not gonna run into any issues. With that as is language, what you should also include 
in your contracts is something called a merger clause. What a merger clause does is it says, all the communications, all the agreements that we could have potentially had before the signing of this contract, all of that been have been distilled into this contract. So this contract is the only thing that represents everything that relates to this, uh, to this, to this agreement. And what that does is it lets you be able to clarify one really important thing. I only have to know what's in this contract. And because I have an as is clause, I'm not worried about anything else that's actually about the asset. I only have to worry about what it is that I agreed to inside of this contract. Guys, hugely, hugely powerful in terms of liability protection whenever you do that. Now, let me tell you why. Let me tell you a quick story. So I have an investor um, that, um, investor client of mine, she had a flip property and she redid all of the plumbing inside of her property, right? And she did all the property and all the plumbing that was underneath the house, right? Underneath the house, all the plumbing got replaced. Now there was an email exchange back and forth from the buyer and her where the buyer asked her what plumbing uh, underneath has been replaced. Her response was all the plumbing has been replaced. You guys already see what just happened? Yeah, what just happened was that they miscommunicated to each other. Come to find out three months later, there was a plumbing leak in the upstairs bathroom that cost $75,000 in damages to the property, right? What do you think that the buyer did at that point? Well, they got super mad and they said, hey, you lied to me. You sold me this defective piece of property. One, you didn't say that the property I was purchasing the property as is. Number two, you told me in an email that all the plumbing was replaced. Your response back to me was all the plumbing was replaced. And my client comes back and says, whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, I don't have any liability for the plumbing. The plumbing was good when I sold you the property. You don't have any claim about an implied warranty on that ground, right? It was months before anything went wrong. The second thing was, is that you're misreading the emails. And the guest of the buyer said, no, I'm not, <laughs> right? So this is the beginnings of a lawsuit. And it's a lawsuit that your insurance is never gonna cover you for because it's actually a lawsuit that's based on fraud. It's based on fraud because it's a communication between the two people. One person is saying that the other one lied to them. Did anybody really lie here though? No, what really happened is that they had a miscommunication and that's how easy lawsuits can start. So if my client would have had a merger clause, he said, hey, it doesn't matter what I wrote in that email because the merger clause says that only the agreements in the contract are things that you can rely on. Any other communications, you can't rely on any of those for any purposes of fraud or contract. Boom. Or, or, or fraud or any other thesis, right? It all is just in this one contract. That's all you can rely on, Mr. Buyer, whoever you're going to be, right? So for my client, she was in a sticky spot at that point on from her legal grounds, but we had her asset protected. So we were using a series LLC structure, which compartmentalized all of her assets. We also used anonymity trust to hide all of her assets. And because we had that structure in place before this whole uh, debacle happened about the plumbing and the threat of the lawsuits about that, what ended up happening is the whole lawsuit got dropped anyway. And that was uh, one of the my crowning achievements of holy smokes, this, this asset protection stuff. You know, I've seen it be, you know, really, really powerful. I didn't know it could be this powerful and that somebody could actually have a claim that could go all the way to a jury trial and holy smokes, we don't know what's going to happen at jury trial. Um, but just because of the fundamental protections were in place, all of a sudden the lawsuit got dropped. So even when she screwed up the contracts because she didn't come to me and ask me for help whenever she was doing all of that, that's okay, you know, do your own thing if that's what you wanna go do. I'm here to help, but listen, I'm not gonna force my help on anybody. Um, but even when she screwed up, her asset protection came in and saved her from it. So it was a really, really cool piece um, to see. And since that time, that happened years and years and years ago. And since that time, um, this has happened multiple, multiple, multiple times, right? And it's a actually repetitive story now that uh, we get to see is like time and time again that, hey, somebody's threatened a lawsuit and we say, hey, we really don't care because we actually have all this protection in place ahead of time. All that being said, though, we're very well insured. Don't think what I'm telling you is say, hey, don't have insurance and go be reckless with what you're doing. Everything I'm talking about, there's a prudent way of approaching these agreements, approaching these contracts. There's a prudent way of structuring your assets that allows you to be, have these leverages and be very ethical while you're doing it. Okay, so number two, you want an indemnity clause limiting the scope of the suit, right? 
And so what that clause is, is inside of the contract that you're going to have with somebody, you tell them in the contract, you're agreeing that if there's anything arising out of or related to this contract, which results in the threat of a lawsuit or an actual lawsuit, you agree to only sue X, right? So what that does is, hey, you're going to indemnify everybody else that's involved in this case tangentially, or me, anybody else that's going to go on. You're not going to hold us responsible for anything except for this one entity. And you, you can make that entity whatever you want to. And if they agree to it in the contract, that's on them because that's what they agreed to, right? That's the way the deal was structured. So some people might have that clause and just have it as a selling entity. Might just be the LLC that owned the asset. Or if you're in a series LLC structure, you would be a child series of your series LLC that sells that asset. And you'd say, okay, well, that's the only entity that you're going to be able to sue. And that's a way to cut off anybody even threatening you or anything else um, that would come from, from the sale of that, um, from the sale of that asset. When this becomes really cool is because, um, you know, you could put in there, um, whatever you want to, that's a negotiating term, right? So if you want to put your operating company that doesn't actually have any assets at all, then they could sue that all day long because what do you care? Right. And maybe they'll limit their liability to only that you don't know until you ask. And that's the biggest thing I've learned in being a real estate investor since the time I was in college and I bought my first transmission and auto repair shop and flipped it at the end of law school, uh, to, to graduate from law school without any debt is that you don't know what you can get until you ask for it. And man, is that true in life just like it is in real estate. Because when you go out there and you make big asks for people, then the worst they can say is no. And a lot of times you say, well, then what will work for you, right? Um, if you're single out there, I'm recently single, but if you're single out there, one of the big things that, that I've started to do now is like I make big asks for people when I wanna go and spend more time with them, you know, wherever that's gonna be, right? Um, amazing women that I have that have been introduced to in my life. Um, and it's been an incredible experience. And I was just like, man, you just make big ass, big ass for saying, Hey, you know, this is where, um, this is what I want, you know? And what they, people will tell you is if you make a big enough ask, a lot of times the answer isn't no completely. It's a different position. that's lesser and man, that's better than nothing, you know? And the same thing works in real estate is the same thing that works in contracts, the same thing that works in relationships from my experience. So, all right. So number three, we want to have financials, which favor your negotiation position in the deal. Remember, you're in a business relationship now with somebody that came in. You must always be ethical. Always, always be ethical. Never lie to anybody. And the reason why is not because of a legal reason. And it's not because it's the quote unquote wrong thing to do. It's because when we act unethically, we know it as a person, an individual. I will know when I'm unethical to somebody else. And that grates on my psyche to be able to be like, oh, like this is actually doesn't work for me to be unethical to other people because I'm actually hurting that person. This isn't fair. It hurts them. And I'm not in the, I'm not in a game of life where I'm going to go around just hurting people and be okay with it. That's a crazy way to try to live. No, I'm going to be ethical, not because it's right for the other person, but because it's right for me. It's right for me to always do the right thing because that's how I live my best life with my best mentality with it. But what that also means is I don't have to give away all the information. I don't have to tell them every single possible thing that I think um, about the property. Um, and one of the great stories and one of the great ways that I've, I've learned this was actually from a really, really great investor. He actually started investing 40 years ago, buying apartment complexes. And now the guy's worth $750 million. Um, and I was with a group that I belong to called Go Abundance. And we were all sitting around the table, 12 of us having dinner with him and talking with him about um, his, his life and his career and building those assets. And, and he actually had an asset that he wanted to sell. And I was like, oh, this is a fascinating, fascinating thing to do. And, and uh, it, it actually turned out to be like a, a unit that was in a part of a strip mall. And somebody asked me, say, hey, well, you know, I'd be interested in buying it. Um, why don't you want it anymore? Right. And so what he could have done was launched into a whole thing about like, well, you know, it's kind of in a rough area and it's really hard to manage and it's the lease it. I have to spend a bunch of time, you know, working with the people in the leasing and it's not really in my wheelhouse because of this, that and the third. Right. He could have told them a bunch of information, which all would have been true for him. But those aren't things that he needed to disclose. There's nothing unethical about him not disclosing all those things. Those things are all personal to him. So instead, what he said was, I just don't like it. I want it off my books. Would you like to buy it? And just went with that. So when you're looking at like financials, it's the same thing. You produce the financials, which are going to favor your negotiation position without lying. You just, sh you show people all the pieces that 
um, accurately represent the property, but you don't actually have to show them every single possible thing unless they ask for it, right? And it's important that you never lie inside of the financial statements too. Um, but what you can do is be able to curtail those financial statements to look the prop, put the property in the best light. It's kind of like the same thing of when you decorate your house before you're going to sell it, right? You always are trying to make that house look in the best position that you can without, you know, like covering up the, the rat holes and, and the termite damage and all that. Well, that would be kind of be unethical. Think of the same kind of parallels inside of your financials and you'll know where that bright line, right line is for you. Um, if you have any questions about it, consult an attorney, right? To say like, hey, you know, where is the right line here legally? Um, if you have any ambiguity on that and consult an attorney that's actually ethical, right? And it's actually in the same business you're in. And so that way they can, you know, uh, make sure that they're going to keep you on the right side of things. All right. So the number, the fourth thing that you need to do after you've done all of those three things, is you got to have asset protection in place to be able to save yourself from any blowback. So what you're looking for in that scenario is, so it says, um, if the worst case scenario happens, right? If something crazy happens, um, with the, the deal go sideways, maybe I was sloppy on certain parts of it, or you know, maybe things that happened that you couldn't anticipate, right? Even despite all of your due diligence. This is where asset protection steps in to be able to be your high wall and castle of defense for yourself and all of your other assets if one deal goes sideways. And that's why it's so important. Anytime you're holding properties, one or more properties, or when you're, um, or when you're selling properties to have the right asset protection in place. Just like I was telling you before about my friend who flipped the properties and had the series LLC in place and how that saved her from lawsuits. This is something that happens time and time and time again um, that allows you to be able to not have to be perfect on everything else because your, your stop loss is there to be able to make sure that if this thing goes sideways, this is how I'm gonna be able to protect myself from it. So let's talk a little bit about asset protection um, and how that actually plays into um, a lot of this. And then I'm gonna have a, a big Q&A section uh, here at the end of it for any questions you guys have on any other um, of the exit documents and agreements and financials um, that come up. So I'm gonna allow some extra time for that um, just so that way everybody can ask their individual personalized questions for all that because there's just so much of this that uh, comes in that's really um, beneficial from your direct feedback. Um, <clears throat> that's right. So I was talking before the number one thing that you always have to remember is that it's, it's not your responsibility to do somebody else's due diligence when they're doing the property. So that means that you, you structure your contracts. So that way only the contract representations are the one that apply. Um, you have them disclaim, they disclaim about being say, Hey, they've had an opportunity to inspect the property or they've had the opportunity and rejected it, or they actually have uh, inspected it. Um, so that way they can't say that, Hey, you know, that this, this thing was like bamboozled on me some way or another. Um, and, but you must never lie to them about anything you do. So, um, you always just want to push everything to the point of saying like, what is what I feel comfortable disclosing without disclosing any more than I really have to, um, to keep my property and my position in the best light without ever having to lie. Um, so the structure of your deal when you're looking to exit is probably one of the most important things. So that's going to be the structure of your contract, the structure of your pitch, right? So if you're actually doing like a larger deal, you'll probably actually have a pitch deck uh, for the deal to say, Hey, here's why you should buy my apartment complex, or here's why you should buy, you know, um, X, Y, Z asset that I have. Um, that becomes really important to you too. And then also the legal structure that you're going to use um, when you sell the asset. So the legal structure important is important both for a liability purpose, but also for a tax purpose. So if you, um, depending on how you sell the assets, right? Um, and what entities you sell the asset, it can really make a big difference. And it really depends on the asset. Um, and, and it also depends on your overall tax position. Um, so on those types of issues, I'm typically going to just go ahead and punt them to your, talk to your CPA. Um, I'm not going to talk about um, on this uh, call about uh, what are all the different tax implications because it gets really down in the weeds. Um, but um, we do have tax services at Royal Legal Solutions. So if you're needing tax advice and tax help on that, we have a whole tax division here besides the asset protection. Um, we are a one-stop shop for everything uh, that's needed for real estate investors. So um, if you guys have seen here at the bottom too on the slides, I have, um, if you text Royal, R-O-Y-L to 474747, um, you get our top 10 things you need to know about asset protection. It gets you um, linked into all of our special offers and freebies that we give away each week. Um, we give away amazing things like um, I, uh, that I'll be telling you guys a little bit 
more about here in a minute. Um, but just know that you'll have that as an opportunity anytime that you want to in here. You said, hey man, I love this stuff. This is great. Just text in Royal the 474747. It's super easy way to just make sure that you're always getting the best of our freebies. I love giving away free stuff um, as much as I can. You know, I try to give away everything I possibly know. All the secrets, everything that I develop, um, if I can possibly give it away for free, I'm always trying to do that. Um, when we're talking about asset protection specifically and taxes, it, you have to do it ahead of time, right? So when you're looking at doing a deal and you're trying to exit that deal, everything is about being proactive. Did you proactively look at how you want to modify your pitch deck? Proactively look at how do you want to exit this deal for your maximum tax advantage? Did you proactively look at what do these contracts need to look like um, to be able to make sure that I'm uh, getting all the protection uh, that I need inside of that contract? And if you're really proactive, what you're going to do is make sure the conversation you're having with your leads to buy that property are actually going to match your pitch deck and they're going to match your contracts. So that way there's continuity in the mind of the buyer from start to finish. If you start the conversation one way and you change the conversation and another by like, hey, I'm going to switch up a bunch of terms in the contract here at the last minute, you're going to lose deals. Why is because you just lost trust. It's like you're just dating somebody and you tell them all these great things about your life and how great it is going to be to be in a relationship with you and you're showing them all these amazing things. And then all of a sudden um, they come to your house and then what do they see in your house? They see that like, oh, the, the dishes are dirty and, and there's a piled up in the sink and everything is kind of disheveled and like, God, this isn't even a very like nice place, but you were trying to tell me that like you're super like well off and that you have all of your stuff together in your life and you're super responsible and like all of those like great things. They're going to be like, this isn't it. And it doesn't matter how good you were on the front end. If you're not delivering all the way through, you're going to lose that lead, right? As you go through it, right? So part of it too with asset protection though, is that if you set it up and you're tax planning up ahead of time, it can do amazing things for you by making sure that everything is gonna work smoothly all the way throughout, but it takes being proactive. It takes having a plan and executing on the plan. And if you don't know the plan, that's why we exist at Royal Legal Solutions is because I'm an expert in the plan and I have trained staff that I've trained in on, here's the plan. Here's where people are at. This is what they're going to need at different stages of their life. Here's the things that make the most sense. And how do I know that? It's because I've interviewed and talked to thousands and thousands of investors and set this stuff up so many times. That I can just meet people and be like, oh, this is exactly what we need. This person needs to put in place next. Um, and when we look at it this way, we're also looking at continuity. I'm saying, what things can we put in place now that we're never going to have to redo? So we're going to put things in place in now and they're just going to grow like Legos and like building blocks as you increase your portfolio over time. So you're never having to redo things. You'll never have to go back and, and reshuffle the deck on what things are going to need to look like. And all that comes from planning, which is where asset protection comes in. And this is how it comes in when you exit the deals. Everything comes down to like, how do I have a plan? How thorough can my plan be? How well is my plan thought out from now until X point? Those are the key fundamental drivers that separate people that are wealthy from people that aren't wealthy. Um, so guys, when we're talking about asset protection, the reason that's important is because um, when you have equity inside of your real estate or inside of your deals, cash in your bank account, stocks, anything really that's an asset, it becomes a magnet for a lawsuit if people know about it. So if you, people know that you have money, they know that you have stocks, well, who do you think is a great person to go sue? Probably the person that has the money. Who's probably a great person to sue? The one, the guy that has two plus properties in his personal name, because he can't move those properties. He can't hide them. And if I'm using services like data tree and other services, I can find out exactly how much equity he has in those properties. So I know how much money I can get. He can't hide those assets and I know exactly where to go for them. And, and I can, they can use tools like that to be able to find out, to make, to know if you're going to be a good target. That's why equity is, is such a dangerous thing. If you have properties in your personal name, but you don't have to take that risk. So there's a way that you can get the target off your back. And there's two main ways that you do that. The first thing that you do is you use trust structures to hide your name from all the companies and the properties. Nothing should tie back to your personal name as part, of the as part of the public records. And trust structures are the best way to do that because a trust structure isn't filed anywhere. So all it appears is the name of the trust as the owner of the company or use land trust to be able to disguise the ownership of the asset itself. The second thing that you do is, is that you move all of your assets, all of your real estate, all of your stocks, all your cash, everything into a series LLC structure. And what that does, it gets all the assets out of your name. It makes you like the super rich because the super rich, unlike everybody else out here, they don't actually own anything. They control things. They don't own anything. 
they control things. What do they control? They control companies that have assets, a company that has their yacht, et cetera. This stuff used to be reserved exclusively for the rich. It was only people that the super rich thought about. Now it's becoming exceedingly more important for real estate investors and anybody that starts to have any any appreciable levels of wealth, any amount of wealth, they say like, man, I'm not comfortable losing that if something goes sideways. That's the person that needs asset protection. There's an appropriate solution for somebody at every stage. That's why we talk about continuity from very beginnings all the way to having $25 million plus in assets. So I was gonna show you guys a brief thing um, on here. Let me see if I can actually pull this up real quick. I wanna show you guys, this is one of the tools that we use. It's called Data Tree. And, and what it does is it allows us um, to be able to find out what properties people own. And I wanna just give you a quick sneak peek of what that actually looks like. Um, this is actually uh, Randy and our sales team that's here talking about it. As you can see, this is Data Tree that's up here in the top left-hand corner. And what Randy is doing here is he's pushing in an address to be able to say like, who owns um, this particular piece of property? Um, and just through like a simple search, he's able to pull in and find out exactly who the owner of that property is. Um, what he could do is he could actually put this owner's name into the search bar and would pull back all of the properties that this person owns, right? And this is a way that people can find out what the extent of all of your assets are very, very easily. Also through data tree, you're also able to pull full reports to find out what the mortgage amount was, any repairs, any assessed values of the property, um, anything that anybody's pulled permits on, every single thing that's associated with that property is associated, is, is able and available on data tree. And I gotta tell you, when people are looking to file a lawsuit, this is what they do to be able to find out whether you're the person that they should sue because you're, they can take your stuff and make it where they get paid at the end of the day. So the question comes to my mind is saying, you know, what does this kind of stuff cost, right? And in the, in the past, it used to be really expensive and really cumbersome. You'd have to set up individual LLCs, one for each property, um, one for each deal that you were going to do, one for each flip. Um, and then you had to pay the one-time fees. You had to pay the register agent fees. You had to pay the yearly maintenance to the state. Um, you had to record minutes for every single one of these entities. And oh my God, doesn't that sound like a pain in the ass? On top of having to have separate bank accounts and, and all types of changes to your insurance and pay maybe be higher commercial insurance rates. So it's like, oh my gosh, this whole thing is so expensive to be asset protected. And that's true until now. What's changed right now is that what I've done with Royal Legal Solutions has made an affordable solution that's available to every single person um, and that makes sense. It avoids all of the issues of the old ways of asset protection. Everything that you've thought about saying, man, that's a reason I don't want to go do that. Um, we've solved every single one of those issues, right? I'm talking about everything from the banking to the insurance, to the, the entity formation, to the how to do the upkeep and maintenance. We've streamlined everything um, so that way um, you don't have to to worry about it. And we take care of everything for you on an ongoing basis. So after you get it set up, you never have to worry about it again. So I'm talking about only one company to maintain. There's one bank account, one set of books, and one tax filing when you're using these series LLC structure. structure. So if you're an investor that's just starting out and you're looking to build, a series LLC is appropriate for you. If you have multiple assets already, a series LLC structure is appropriate for you. It costs a fraction of the cost of doing things the old way, and it allows you to scale infinitely at no additional cost. And that's the magic of a series LLC. You can scale infinitely at no additional cost while having the same amazing asset protection and the same amazing anonymity, which pulls your name off of any of the, of the public records. So this amazing um, innovation with having the series LLC in combination with a trust allows you to do the anonymity, allows you to have the protection. And because we're using a trust structure and land trust to move the property from your personal name into the land trust with the land trust being owned by the series LLC, we're able to completely avoid what's known as the due on sale clause. And the due on sale clause is something that says where the, it's written into your mortgage that says, if you transfer this asset, um, we can call the note due and you have to pay for all of it all at once, right? But if you transfer it into a land trust, none of that applies. So this is a clever loophole that we use to be able to move properties into the land trust. We accomplish the anonymity. Uh, be, nobody can find out who owns a trust and the asset is actually titled in the name of the trust. You have the trust documents to prove that you get to control the trust. Um, and, and at the same time, we also avoid this, this due on sale clause um, issue because it's a, it's a nice little legal loophole uh, for that. 
So this is the structure, guys. This is the $10,000 diagram uh, that I put together initially. So when I put together initially, this is something that I created years ago um, for my very first client. And what happened was is that he was a real estate investor and I, I met him at a meetup group and um, I was getting back into real estate after I left my job in litigation, suing insurance companies. Um, got tired of beating them up and I was like, you know, I'm gonna go back into real estate. I got hammered with so many questions all the time and I was helping so many people um, just for free, you know, cause I was like, Hey, well, this is great. You know, great way to be able to help people. And you know, these connections will be good for me um, because you know, the more I can help them, you know, they'll, they'll probably help me too. So um, I was answering all these questions for people. And then one guy came in and he said, Hey Scott, I got 50 properties. What do I need to do with 50 properties? And I was like, Oh my gosh. And uh, I don't know, man, let me look into it. So um, what I did is I came back and I, I looked into it for about a week and then I came back to him. And I said, Hey, listen, I think there's some good ideas using a series LLCs or, you know, Delaware statutory trust. Both of these things we actually do use now. Um, but uh, he's here in Texas. So the series LLC made the most sense. And I was explaining to him a little bit how it worked and how the trust structures work. And he's like, okay, this actually sounds like a much better thing than I've ever heard of from anybody else. Um, uh, I want you to go, um, like actually go figure out how to put it all together and actually do this for me. And I was like, well, I was just looking into something. I don't know about putting it all together. First one, he's like, yeah, you're a smart guy. Go figure it out. So he cut me a check for $10,000, sent me on my way. Um, I got every single book I could on, on the topic. Um, and I spent three months just researching it, um, getting th into all the books. I contacted all the professionals that work with series LLCs and De Delaware statutory trusts and the entire field um, and all the top guys and was interviewing all of them. And, and from that process, I felt confident that I could put one together. And a lot of these guys were actually nice enough to share their forms and other documents with me. Um, and with that, I was able to put together my very first uh, piece. And so that's what this is. This is a series LLC structure with anonymity and combined with an estate plan. So what you're looking at right here is that you have the parent series LLC that's, um, you have the parent series LLC that's right here. And then you have each individual child series in a trust. The child series acts just like an LLC for liability purposes, but they're free. Um, they cost nothing to maintain. You don't have to file anything anywhere uh, to be able to do them. You can just create them on your own desktop. It's really amazing. Trust structures are the same way. You can create them on your own desktop as well too. Um, they're free. There's nothing to, um, that you have to do with that. You know, you just have to have the right documentation and know what you're doing. And so what you'll see here is that we have one property, property A, is going to be held in title for land trust A. So if the property is located at 123 Main Street, it's, Main Street, it's held in the 123 Main Street Trust. Then the 123 Main Street Trust is then in turn owned by Child Series A. And now this is, asset is compartmentalized for liability and held anonymously. If something happens to this asset, it can't touch any of the other assets and it can't come up here to the parent. So every time we get a new asset, we just spin up a new Child Series and a new trust and that feeds it back into the parent. The parent entity, if you have an LLC right now, you've probably made the mistake of listing yourself as the person who uh, is the owner of this LLC. Well, guess what? Now when people come to search, um, search you out, what they're gonna do is find out that you own a company and then likely, if unless you have all of your assets held anonymously using a structure like this, they can find out the full extent of your assets. You just made yourself mildly protected, but you've laid out all of your cards. They know exactly what the pot of gold there that's look worth attacking and they're gonna help that you screwed up your accounting records, that you pierced a corporate bail or you did something else um, that's going to be able to invalidate the structure so they can get after all that money. What we do is that we make it where the, the company itself is held anonymously. Each asset is held anonymously. Nobody can find out what anything is connected to each other and nobody can find out that's actually connected to you. Everything is formed through the law firm. So it's then protected by the attorney client privilege on top of that. And guess what? You can't find out what you and your attorney know. That's part of the privilege of the attorney client privilege, right? What they'd have to do is spend tens of thousands of dollars to be able to fight through the court to force a judge to compel me to speak uh, in the court. And so far, that's never happened. What happens every single time so far is that the lawsuits just get dropped. People think this is way too much work. I'm just going to go after the next case. So the great thing about this asset holding company is that it can all be held by your estate plan. Meaning that if you have a living trust in place as part of your estate plan, uh, we put these together for our clients and what this does is it completely avoids the probate process when you die. So if you don't have a living trust in place and you just have a will 
or if you have nothing at all, everything goes in the court. Everything now becomes part of the public. The public then gets to see who inherits all the money. Now you just made all of the, your legacy, your children, et cetera, all at risk because now everybody knows what the extent of all of the assets are. Um, when you have a living trust in place, what happens with this all happens privately. So none of it becomes part of the public record. And, and the additional benefit is that with the living trust, somebody gets to immediately control the assets. So in real estate, this becomes really important. Why? Because people need to be able to pay the mortgages. They need to be able to pay the insurance. They need to be able to collect the rents. There's a lot of active business that's going on inside of real estate that just because you die doesn't mean the business stops, okay? So when you have the living trust in place, it allows somebody else to immediately control all of those aspects for you. Um, and that way you can ensure that, you know, nothing happens to all these assets that you wanted to, you know, have to take care of your children, et cetera. And that's part of your, what your estate plan needs to have in it. So here's where you have your estate plan. You have your parent series LLC that's held anonymously that then becomes your asset holding company. Everything in your life goes into the asset holding company. You won't, you shouldn't own anything more. Uh, you shouldn't own anything at all, actually, in your personal name, um, just like the rich people do. And then at the very bottom of this, this is where your individual transactions are going to be. So you're going to have each of your individual child series and trust to be able to hold the properties to compartmentalize them. And then when you sell a property, you can sell the property directly out of the trust. So you remember those agreements that we talked about before, where you're going to have the contract, you're going to have the pitch deck, you're going to have um, the as is clause, all of those great things. All of that is going to happen here at this trust level, right? Those were all those agreements relate to. Um, and so when the trust sells the property out to the third party, um, that's where uh, all of those agreements are gonna become you know, really, really important. Now, if something happens to the agreement, a lawsuit comes out of it, then who are they suing back? Well, they can, they will, the only person they can come back after is here is this child series A, right? Uh, of your series LLC. Why is this so incredible? Because, Remember a couple of things. One, you might've been able to get into their, their merger clause and the indemnity clause that said who they could sue. But if you didn't, then the person they're gonna try to sue is gonna be that per person that was the property owner. Because the property owner is the one that signed the contract. It was also the one um, that uh, entered into all the agreements. Well, who was that in this case? It was the trust and the child series A associated with that trust. So both of them get sued. But guess what? After you got paid the money after selling that asset, you took all of the money out of child series A and distributed it to the parent or you took it out and distributed it to yourself personally. So what does child series A have anymore at that time? Nothing. So when they file the lawsuit after you sell the asset, the child series A blocks them from being able to come after you personally and blocks them from being able to um, come after any of the money. Now, I got to tell you, this is why not lying and not being deceitful and not being fraudulent is so important. There is no legal structure in the world that protects you from being an a-hole. If you went out there and you were trying to intentionally screw other people and they can show how you were intentionally trying to do that, none of this stuff works, right? So you have to actually have a, a certain level of ethics for the legal system to be able to protect you, right? But if you're an honest person, you know, um, just being honest doesn't mean you're not gonna get sued, right? That's why you have to have this stuff. But if you're operating in an ethical way, right? and you use these structures, the ability for people to sue you and be successful in any way that is actually gonna material impact your life at all, almost becomes zero. I mean, it is so incredibly powerful. When you combine these types of tools with the other things that I talked to you about earlier about your contracts and the way that you would operate, you're talking about a trajectory of your life that is so much stronger than what normal people get to experience on the day-to-day -day basis. Okay, let's keep going here. So. Um, so <clears throat> this is where it comes in. So to really protect yourself, you really need is an overall system um, that's covering you from every angle without requiring a ton of time. Um, that's why you need the types of agreements that are already made for you to be able to like, okay, here's the contracts I need to do. Here's the indemnity clause I need to put in. I went to my local attorney or went to Royal Legal Solutions or wherever it may be to help me make sure that all those things are gonna be right. Now you don't have to think about that anymore. When you talk about the asset protection pieces that I was telling you about now with the structure that comes in place, that allows all of those uh, fundamental questions of the foundations of your company to be addressed. And the great part about it is if you're working with Royal Legal, we maintain everything for you and we're on, on call for you at no additional cost for any questions that you have, whether it's about your agreements or whether it's about um, your entity structure, whatever the case may be, you never get charged extra just for being able to talk with us about it. And what that does is it lets you focus 100% of your time on making deals instead of 
uh, instead of worrying about all these minutia of details, like you're the deal finder, right? Like you're the powerful creator in your life. So you need to be out there looking at deals. And the more that you can have other people do stuff for you, the more powerful you become because you're working inside of the place that's your leverage zone, your power zone of actually being able to move your life forward. If that sounds exciting for you guys, text Royal, R O Y L, to 474747. Um, and you're going to want to grab that ebook, the top 10 things you need to know about to protect your assets. It's going to have more. Um, concepts that are like there in here that are even uh, even higher level, right? I'm talking about things like equity stripping and all kinds of amazing things that you can do to further protect yourself even beyond the pieces that we're talking about here today. So again, guys, this is the structure that I'm talking about. Once this thing is, uh, this, this whole structure is put in place, we move the assets in. And by the way, you don't have to do any of that. We take care of all that for you. We form all the agreements for you. The only thing you have to do is fill out some questionnaires and work with us and be available for us to talk to if we have any questions uh, that we need answered along the way. We also maintain the full entity structure for you for all the trust, all the child series, the parents, um, the registered agents, everything gets taken care of for you. If you ever need to make a change to say, hey, I, to your living trust or to your parent company, because a lot of times this is the number one thing we get. I know I wanna do this estate plan. I know I wanna do the asset holding company. What I'm afraid of is like, I really have to think about it. And the reason is, is because you think you have to get it right and you don't, you can get it totally wrong and that's okay. The important piece is to take the action steps of actually putting it in place. Because once it's in place, you can then revisit it in version two two months later, six months later, a year later, as often as you need to, to have the revisions done to make it the way that you want it to be as you get more time to think through it. The costs of doing nothing are exceedingly high because when you do nothing, your assets are exposed. Everybody knows what you own. If you die, everything goes into the court and it's part of the public record. Then it gets past your heirs to make them a target. In the meantime, things might happen that's wrong inside of probate. And then nobody can control the real estate assets, which means mortgages aren't getting paid, rents aren't getting collected, insurance isn't getting paid. And then all of a sudden something can happen that can light the whole thing up in smoke and fire. But if you take proactive steps, like the ones I'm suggesting for you here and showing you in this diagram and the other documents that I've been telling you about, you can avoid all of those eventualities. They can just be taken off the table. And that means you just never have to think about them again. And then if anything changes in your life, you know that you know exactly who to go to to be able to solve uh, the problem and it's going to have the right solution for you. So this is the ironclad protection um, that exists. Um, it's much more affordable now and it's available to the, just the average investor. Um, and it works for the average investor just like it works for the very highest level of, of people of net worth um, that we work with. So we work with people that have all the way from, you know, $100,000 of, of total net worth all the way to people that have $25 million uh, of net worth. And it's the exact same fundamental system. Some changes uh, are necessary because of tax purposes, but the basics are exactly the same. And this is my insider's advantage that comes from interviewing and being uh, a, an attorney for thousands of, of real estate investors all over the country, um, dealing in every type of asset class, every type of net worth um, that exists. I get to take all of the best ideas from all the people that I interact with and to distill it down into you. So I'm learning more every single day. So you don't have to. And then I can just come in and say like, Hey, this is what we need to do next because Hey, I learned a new thing. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get either a text message or an email that's going to come from me and then say, Hey, listen, this is a new piece that I learned. That's actually going to, um, amazingly impact your life. And so let's talk about how we could put that together. And if that makes sense for you to do right now. So, <clears throat> right now, we just hit over the $4.5 billion in um, assets that we protect right now. Um, and we hit 29,000 uh, real estate investors who we communicate with frequently. And that's through our, like, our email or text message or Facebook, um, my podcast, Real Estate Nerds. Um, I, I also do a ton of work with podcasting um, and guest sharing on lots of other uh, podcasts, just like I am here with the Multifamily Investor <clears throat> summit. So uh, just to share with you guys a little bit about that. Um, if you guys haven't heard of me before, um, then these are the three things to check out. You want to check out the Royal Legal Solutions website. You want to check out the Real Estate Nerds podcast. That's where I interview uh, people about their uh, best and worst deals and what they learn from. So we can learn from the mistakes um, that other people have made. And guess what, guys? Most of the mistakes aren't the deal itself. It's what's going on between your ears. 
uh, and what's going on in your life, you know, while things are happening. And the more awareness you can have about that, the more apt you're going to be able to be to make better decisions, see things when they're really going wrong, pick up on those red flags and not have to make those mistakes. And that's what those investors train us how to do um, during that. And we have for everybody here, this is the website um, for royallegalsolutions.com. So um, I got to tell you guys, a lot of people think that they're honest and that that makes it the sense, but uh, plaintiff's attorneys don't care if you're one of the good guys, whether it's because you did something wrong in the contract or something that you fraudulently did in the financials, maybe you didn't do anything wrong, but for some reason you got somebody on the other end that thinks that you did. Well, a plaintiff attorney doesn't care if you're good or not. What he cares about is whether he's going to get paid. So what that does is leave all these attorneys chasing you uh, for uh, <laughs> chasing you around with a lawsuit um, while you're trying to, uh, you know, just trying to live your life. And, but it didn't have to be that way. So um, what I'm recommending for you guys is saying, what is the value to you to be able to know that you can operate in your life with somebody else watching your back and you don't have to worry about lawsuits. And if somebody looks to sue you, the lawsuits get stopped before it ever gets off the ground before it starts. Cause that's what I'm really talking about. I'm talking about a way for, to outsource these whole areas of your life onto somebody else. And for you to be able to focus on what it is that you do best, whether that's going to be working with your family, um, working on better deals, whatever the case may be um, for you and something that's so powerful that people don't even want to mess with you because you're in such a strong position uh, from the get-go. They actually think like, holy smokes, if this guy is this strong at this point, you know, what else does he have in store for me? Now, I don't even want to mess with that guy, right? You don't, you know, that's, that's really what we want, right? We want people to think like, you know, there's no chance that I'm going to have with that guy. And, and that's exactly what we do is we make them believe that and because it actually is true. So, with this integrated approach, um, what it's going to be with the estate planning and the asset protection and the real estate altogether, these all operate synergistically. They, I'm sure if you guys have ever looked at looking at um, different types of professionals before, um, it's like, oh, I got I to talk to this guy about one thing and then this other guy about another thing and this one, like this other guy about another thing. And then you end up in the middle having to quarterback a bunch of different things together. And it can get really frustrating because not all of those people uh, they know their realm really well, but they don't know necessarily how it connects to everybody else. And that's what's different about Royal Legal Solutions is because we've integrated all thing, everything together all underneath a one-stop shop. And, and because of that, uh, what it means is that you only have one person to talk to for everything that you need. And it's one unified message about here's what we need to do next. And actually, you don't even have to come to us with new things most of the time. We're going to be coming to you to be, to, with all the new things that we're thinking about, introducing new ideas to you. So we're going to keep you on the cutting edge with everything that I'm learning about um, as I up my own game in real estate investing and I up my own game as being an attorney, my own game as, as getting better at, at, at tax and all the things that we can be doing in there. Um, so I think we already do a really great job. Um, I think a lot of people have told me that I highly respect and have really large net worths of being able to tell me like, man, the stuff that you guys do for people is incredible, but I'm always about trying to get better, you know, and sharing that with you guys as much as I can. Again, this is the structure we talked about. You have the estate plan all the way at the very top. You have your living trust at the top. Your living trust then owns your anonymous asset holding company. And then your asset holding company owns all of the individual properties that you own. All of your cash and stocks are gonna be held here. Whenever anything happens to you um, or whenever you have a life event, then all of a sudden your living trust comes in and passes it over everything to your heirs. So that way everything avoids probate. Everything is being able to immediately manage. So nothing happens to your real estate assets and everything stays um, nice and protected both for you and for your heirs. Your heirs will actually inherit a protected structure. So what do they get? They also get all of this protection for themselves as well. So this is how the major investors um, and global corporations protect their assets. They're compartmentalizing, they're holding things anonymous. And the reason why is because they understand that, especially living here in the States, that lawsuits um, cost a ton of money. Even if you're right, even if you win, they cost a ton of money. So what they decided to do is say, hey, we're going to make an investment um, in making sure that um, lawsuits just don't happen. Right. And if we can invest this amount of money, we think that we're going to start save off like all of these lawsuits. And that's why we want to be able to use asset protection for all of that, because um, what we're about at the end of the day is making money. And that's why major investors and corporations are using it. Um, not for really any other purpose besides the fact that they just know like that 
they, people know they have money, right? I mean, and once you get to a certain level, people know you have money, right? And then once, uh, especially for corporations, they can actually just look up how much money you have. Um, but when you're using these types of tools, it gets so hard for somebody to come after you that they just don't do it, right? And that's why those guys are doing the same tools, the same methodologies that I'm outlining for you um, here today. So, these advanced strategies um, are proven to work. I've used them time and time again. I've defended them um, time and time again. And I gotta tell you guys, they do not cost as much as you think. They don't cost $15,000 to put together something that can really last you for the rest of your life uh, with a one-time investment to just protect you and protect your family and protect your children for the rest of your life. So the, the case study um, to have with this guys is that you guys got to know whenever anything lawsuits happen, it's usually not because anybody's actually being um, really anything like bad, right? A lot of times, most all lawsuits happen just because of a misunderstanding. Um, and there also is another part, somebody got hurt. Somebody got hurt. Now they think they have a misunderstanding. They want to turn around and sue somebody. Our court system allows people to do that really easy and get paid a lot and allow attorneys get paid a lot for doing that, which is, I think, actually kind of bad. I think we actually need to you know, revamp the way that we think about the system. But and, until that happens, what you're left with is saying, do I need asset protection in place? Well, um, if the answer to that in mind is like, well, no, I think, think I'm honest and, and whatever, right? Then you got to be thinking about saying like, I don't think I'm ever going to be misunderstood. And what becomes really important with this, guys, is whenever you're thinking about the contracts that you're putting together for people, um, whenever you're thinking about those financial statements um, that you're doing at the exit, you have to be thinking about all the things that come into play with that um, to... Uh, that allow these types of liabilities to exist. So as much as you actually need all of the paperwork um, to come into play, you also need the right structure to um, be able to uh, protect yourself as you go forward. Um, so you guys, I don't know if you guys have known about these types of legal entities you can use. And uh, the series LLC has been around for over 20 years. Contract laws that we've been using are hundreds of years old. Um, so we were looking at what the types of agreements you need to use. Um, you have to understand that a lot of these uh, tools that you use for all of your contracts, your financials, allegations of fraud, whatever the case may be, actually have a deep history on what can be included there. So that's why things that when you go onto LegalZoom um, and you go onto Rocket Lawyer or whatever types of um, services that you look at, they're only going to be giving you something that's a boilerplate generic uh, type of uh, piece to it. But if you don't really understand what's all in those documents, you don't understand all the case law, you don't really know how those things really jockey together to really get you the protection you need. As I said before, if you have somebody that already has hired a lawyer that you know, and that to vet certain agreements, and you're in the exact same business that that person is in, you're probably doing pretty good with that. Um, if you want something that is is lesser representation that that's where you would go with like a boilerplate agreement like legal zoom that's probably might be um pretty inexpensive um but if you're really serious about saying like you know i want to be on the cutting edge of what i'm doing with my business that's when it makes sense to go hire your own attorney to be able to have your own professional representation of what you're doing and somebody that can really explain it all to you so what we do is we're always focused on what the cutting edge is and that's what the series llc really brings to the table it's that was the cutting edge of a legal entity that allows infinite uh, scalability at no additional cost. Just like we are all trying to always be on the cutting edge of what's going on with contract law, what's going on with how people are cutting deals, how people are structuring the deals um, when they get in and out of them. So um, the reason you might not have heard of this too is that most attorneys just stick with what they already know. I'm always trying to be on the cutting edge and that's where these things kind of get uh, they come out is because I'm the guy that's always there studying all of the material to be able to bring it to you guys, either through my newsletters or through the website or through the, the texting options that I've told you about here. I'm doing everything I can to give away all of my secrets all the time. If you guys are friends with me on Facebook, you're always going to see me jumping on Facebook live too. Um, you know, Royal Legal Solutions or Scott Royal Smith uh, on Facebook. I'm going on Facebook live sharing instantaneously with information I'm learning. If I read an amazing article that I was like, oh, this blows my mind about this, I jump on Facebook Live and I start to share it with, uh, share it with my audience like right there in that moment. So you can just scroll through my newsfeed actually and find out here's what I'm thinking about certain things. So that's gonna apply to what new things I'm learning about. Like everything's super boring. Everything down to like accounting that I'm learning about, um, to new financial structuring that people are doing, um, to new things with how people are exiting deals. Um, all of those uh, things are all shared with everybody immediately on Facebook Live as well. So if you're really big into Facebook, that's a great way for us to be able to connect. Um, 
and what I want to tell you guys is that when you put these things together, when you have the contracts right, um, when you're thinking about the merger clauses that are in part of those contracts, when you're thinking about the indemnity clause in your contracts, when you're thinking about your financial disclosures, when you're thinking about your asset protection um, that comes into place here, it levels the playing field uh, for for you as an investor with other people, right? It puts you in that position of strength and that position of leverage. Um, so that way, you know that you're always going to be uh, taken care of and that you're always going to be in the right. Now, some people said like, well, I don't need to do all any of this stuff because like I'm a really honest person and I'm never going to do anything wrong to anybody. And I say, that's awesome. But what that doesn't mean is somebody can't hurt you because we talked about is it could just be a simple misunderstanding. And the other part about this too is you can always decide to give money to people right? You could always decide to give them money. That's a very different question than somebody saying, you have to give me money and I'm going to use this bully of a legal system to come get it from you. So even if you're the most ethical person, the most generous person in the world, being protected still makes sense because you still have the opportunity to live exactly the way you'd want to, to be as generous as you want to on based upon your own ethics. But never does it make sense to allow people to have leverage over us, to be able to control our lives, control our destinies. We need to take control of that because you deserve to be able to take control of your own destiny. Um, so what this actually requires is some types of customization for every person's particular interest and every person's particular needs um, as it comes into it. So that can mean a lot of different things. And that's why we operate as a one-stop shop. We have everything that's here in-house and we have a team of about 40 people, multiple attorneys, a large team of paralegals that comes in to be able to give amazing service to people at a fraction of the cost um, of what they would otherwise be available to. That's why it's no longer reserved for the super rich is because those are the things that I brought to the table and developed this company um, into being able to help investors all the way from the very beginning that want to lay the foundation all the way through people that have $25 million plus in net worth. So guys, the time to do these types of things, the time to look at your contracts, the time to look at um, what your financials disclosures are going to be like, the time to look at your pitch deck, the time to look at your asset protection, it are all proactive steps that you have to do well ahead of time. When there's the threat of a lawsuit, everything is already too late. It's too late to try to, to fix it at that point. Once there's a threat of a lawsuit, I actually really can't help you very much anymore. Um, if I try to help you at that point, you've already been served with papers. It's called a fraudulent transfer. Uh, we can move the assets, but what's going to happen is the court is going to claw all of those things back, meaning they're going to invalidate the transfer uh, from it. And then it actually just doesn't do any good at that point um, to, to go that route. But if you put everything in place ahead of time and you proactively think through all of the, the documentation that we were telling you about, proactively think through asset protection, you can have amazing levels of protection uh, put in place. Now, I wonder, wonder everybody, what you're thinking, guys thinking about costs. I got to tell you, Royal Legal Solutions, we're very interested about how can we do things the most efficient way possible that has the maximum impact. And that's the way that we believe that we give the most amount of value um, to all of our members that come in. And so um, it's, it's actually surprisingly affordable and it's easy to implement. We can usually get everybody protected inside of two weeks um, from the time that they, we start working with you. Uh, once we get all the documentation that we need, there's no disruption in the business. In fact, nothing really has to change nearly at all. The way that we're, uh, the way that we're structured is to be able to um, seamlessly put everything together for you, transfer all the assets. And that way your day to day doesn't really change at all. All of the system essentially just runs in the background of your life. And we can explain more to that to you um, during a consultation. So this is um, professional uh, asset protection. It's management. We are the leading experts in the field, especially when it comes to real estate, because that's all we do day in, day out, um, is work with real estate investors all over the country. So this can el virtually eliminate your chan uh, ever chances of ever having stuff in the courtroom just because you're so strong that people won't want to sue you. And if you ever are sued, know that I'm here to have your back, to be able to talk to your local counsel, wherever you might be in the country, and to be able to work with them to show them here's how everything you put in place with the contracts, um, with the financials, the pitch deck, anything that you've had as part of that real estate transaction on the exit, the asset protection, et cetera. So that way they have the best tools, the best bullets that they can to go into that fight and to be able to win it for you, right? I've never even had to do that yet though, because the asset protection structures keep the lawsuits at, at bay, especially when you have all the other I's, dot and T's crossed on your paperwork. That's how you're able to make it where people look at that and say like, listen, and there's nothing here to come after. Um, so we're just going to let this guy go. 
So I have a special incentive for you guys for, for the, all the serious real estate investors that I know that are here at this amazing summit. Um, and what I want to show you guys is that this is what we would typically, um, this is what our typical offer looks like. We have our standard pricing where they have an op anonymous operating company that it, it's a shell company that acts as your property manager. Um, it doesn't actually um, hold any assets at all, but what it does is it manages all of your transactions. Um, and then you can operate your company um, people without people knowing that you own it. So that way when people look at you at the public records, it literally is going to look like you qualify for food stamps. You don't own any companies and you don't have any assets in your name. Um, somebody will be angry with you, but it doesn't look like you have anything to come after. We have an asset holding company. That's the series LLC with the anonymity. Um, for the 3950. We have the anonymous trust for 500. We have property transfers the $300 each. Typically those are $600. And we have the estate plan that I mentioned to you guys, which is 2,500. For just the people that are on this call, it's only going to apply for the people that are on this call that are listening um, to this. Um, what I'm going to do is actually give you guys an exclusive discount. Uh, for this. It's just a special thank you for letting me come and to be able to, to speak to you guys. Um, I'm dropping the, the price from 9,500 to 5,900 and that's for the full complete package. So if you don't have anything in place right now, um, you can get yourself fully set up in, in about two weeks uh, to get yourself fully protected and have all the pieces in place. And not only do we set it up, we actually educate you every step along the way. So there's a huge education component that we don't even charge for that's probably worth, you know, five to $10,000 all of in its own about how all of these things work. Um, if that's something that's interests you. Otherwise for everybody else, we can put it all together for you, maintain it all for you and let you sleep easy at night knowing that somebody else has got your back and looking out for you. Um, a great way to be able to um, reach us and to be able to find out if this is the right option for you. And again, this is for people that are on this call is to go to this special link. It's royallegalsolutions.com slash SLLC1. Uh, what that link allows you to do is to sign up for a $150 consultation. It's an hour long consultation. We build a whole roadmap for you, a written roadmap of here's exactly what you need to be put in place. This is when you need to be put in place. This is the cost you're probably looking at to be able to put those things in place. Um, and so that way you know exactly what it is you need to do. Do you have to do anything with that information? Absolutely not, right? But then you have the roadmap. You know, this is what my future will look like. And that's what that $150 consultation is designed to do. We'll have options for you to be able to make purchases just like you've seen here um, on this previous slide over here at the end of that consultation for any pieces that make sense for you to be able to put in place. And there's a ton of other things that we can do for you that aren't even listed here. This is just a, a, um, a representation of like what a great package is for anybody um, looking to, to come in. And you get those discounts by coming to the Royal Legal Solutions dot com slash SLC one website. Um, and then being able to sign up for your consultation. That's how we know that you came from here to be able to give you those discounts. So you'll go there and you'll identify yourself as a, Hey, I came from the MFIN. Um, and, um, then we know for sure that, uh, you are eligible to get those deep, deep discounts for what you're looking for. So, if you haven't yet, guys, open up your browser and type in royallegalsolutions.com slash SLLC1. Uh, you'll have a couple of a, a landing page to come to that gives you a quick debrief on like what that is. You have an opportunity to be able to put in your credit card uh, to be able to schedule um, that consultation, which locks you in uh, for those discounts. So if you want to lock in those discounts, that's what you need to go to. Go to royallegalsolutions.com slash SLLC1. Now, um, this is ironclad protection. We're offering full support with it. So all the support is going to be included. So you have unlimited access to our attorneys and unlimited access to our staff or anything that you need once you sign up uh, for the consultation from the royallegalsolutions.com slash SLLC1. Um, I also guys want to let you know that there's no risk in working with Royal Legal Solutions. Unlike other law firms that make you sign these complicated engagement agreements and then you get halfway into the project and they say, hey, I need more money and it turns out to be that it's not actually the thing you wanted. I, I bet I could have a poll on here of how many people that's happened to and half of the room would raise their hand. With us, we do it totally differently. Well, my, I do everything with flat rate pricing. So you know exactly how much you need to spend to get a particular outcome, to get fully protected. How much is it going to be? What's that going to look like? It's this amount of money. So there's no hidden pricing that can come up for you. I also have made it zero risk for anybody to work with us. I offer a hundred percent refund guarantee. And this is something I actually had to fight my staff on because they say, Hey Scott, we're giving people tons and tons of value into here. And if they, for some reason, you know, something in their life changes and they decide that, Hey, I, um, you know, all of a sudden I'm just going to sell 
sell all my assets and I, I don't really care about asset protection anymore, whatever the case may be, right? Or maybe my, my, my wife got angry and now all of a sudden I don't want to do it or something like that, right? They said, well, we should keep, you know, some of that money because we worked really hard for it. I said, no, our mission is to give people the best possible experience uh, with an attorney firm that can handle everything for them in one stop shop. And what we're going to do is we're going to offer everybody a hundred percent refund guarantee until the time we actually give you your stuff. So once we give you all of your stuff, you know, then we've actually fully delivered. But up until that time, you get all of your money back. If for any reason we don't a hundred percent deliver on every promise I've made to you. And if we're not amazing every step of the way, you can get all your money back. We'll get, we'll refund you. Um, no questions asked with it. I'm happy to refund anybody that's not exceedingly happy with everything that we do. And that's something you won't find anywhere else from any other law firm. Um, guys, if you haven't texted Royal to 474747 yet, go ahead and do that right now. You're going to get the top 10 ways to protect your assets. It's going to have some of the strategies we talked in here, but it's going to have a lot more. I'm talking about things like equity stripping, and all kinds of amazing things that you need to be thinking about um, as you grow your wealth. Are you going to put them all in place right now? No, of course not. But you need to have them on the radar, things that you're thinking about, that you know about, that you when somebody mentions it, you know what they're talking about. And this is just a really quick primer. I've really just a Distilled all of the secrets down into really sharp ways for you to know exactly what it is, when you're going to need to do it, why would you want to do it, when would you not want to do it. All of that's inside of this ebook. And that's if you text Royal to 474747. And the great part about that too is once you're part of that text list, now you get part of our, our weekly freebies. Every Friday, we send out freebies to every single person. So you guys remember that presentation I showed you earlier about data tree and how you can find all the information um, about somebody online with all the properties, what their equity is, how many properties they own, et cetera. What we did in this last week's um, freebie actually was give somebody a deep dive into that, give them the full reports. It actually costs us money to pull these full reports for people. Um, and I gave it away to everybody for free because I was like, well, you know, listen, if, if they want, if they're part of our community, then I want to make sure that they're taken care of, that they have the best information about what is exposed for them. Um, and so we did, we sent out a text and say, listen, if you are somebody that is worried about what information is out there about you, um, this is what we got an offer for you to be able to do that. All you got to do is click on this link. Um, you enter in your information, um, some basic information about that. And then we're able to pull those reports and send them to you. Um, so that way you can see exactly what there's about you. And it was totally free. That's something you would pay thousands of dollars for if you went to another company. And I do that for my, the people that we interact with and my clients um, every single week. So text Royal to 474747 if you're looking for a bunch of awesome free stuff for me every single week. So guys, um, that was our information security audit that I was telling you about. Um, we're always trying to give away everything we possibly can um, to you guys for free because that's the name of the game um, for Scott Royal Smith is I'm in the game of seeing how much stuff I can give away to people that I think is amazing. It's happening on my Facebook Live. It's happening in my Real Estate Nerds podcast. It's happening right now through this presentation. So if you haven't yet, text Royal to 474747. And, and if anybody wants to... Um, uh, reach me. Uh, these are the best ways to do it. So if you, this actually is my personal email address. I'm giving it all to you guys because um, that's something I promised as I was going to give away everything I possibly could when I came onto the stage here today. Um, and if you guys have any questions um, about anything that we've gone over, or if you don't get your Q and A question answered, or if you want to connect with me about um, anything with asset protection or real estate, um, just contact me at scott at royallegalsolutions.com. Either I always try to get back to every single one of my emails myself, but I get about 300 emails a day. Um, so I have some staff that helps me with that. Um, but you're, you, once you're a member of Royal Legal Solutions, um, you actually end up having my personal cell phone. So if anything goes wrong at any time in your life, you can always even just text me to be like, hey, I need to talk to you and I'll get back to you as, as, as soon as I possibly can. Um, this is the phone number uh, to reach the main line. Um, if you didn't text in to the Royal, the 474747, if you didn't do the royallegalsolutions.com slash SLLC1 link to be able to sign up for a consultation, this is a, a number that you can call into. Um, this is our main office line. Uh, you'll be able to speak to Crystal um, or one of our other staff here uh, to be able to um, talk to you about, you know, is asset protection really appropriate for you? Um, and what are, the, what are the steps that you can take um, to get more information from our website, um, as well as the opportunity to sign up for consultation if you didn't do that through the special link. Now, if you use the royallegalsolutions.com slash SLLC1 link, 
and sign up for that consultation now, you also get locked in for the cheaper pricing, right? If you just call in to this number, I can't guarantee you the cheaper pricing in there. But in any case, if you sweet talk Crystal and you tell, hey, I was a member of the MFIN, I was there and I listened to Scott, you know, you might be able to talk her into it. But the only way for sure that I can guarantee they get locked in for the cheaper pricing is if you do the royallegalsolutions.com slash SLLC1 uh, to sign up for uh, the consultation that way. So excellent guys. Well, I am ready for some, an amazing Q and a here. I'm ready to answer any questions you guys have. All right. Hey, Scott, uh, Chris Salerno here. Uh, Danny Randazzo, um, had to uh, head back to Charleston. So I'll be taking over for him, uh, for today and tomorrow. So, um, currently I do not see any, um, questions and answers. Uh, that was a phenomenal presentation and, uh, sounds like a great discount that you're offering. Any closing remarks, uh, before we, uh, head on? Yeah, no, guys, I just want to say um, that uh, it's just been a pleasure being able to um, talk with you guys here today and share all this. Um, if, uh, if anybody is looking um, at the, the very best things that you can do inside of real estate, and upping your game with that, uh, let me know what it is the things that you're looking at. Email me with what are the best resources you have. I'm always trying to learn more. I'd love to learn more from everybody here. Um, I'd love to work with you and be, of course do work for you. But number one in life, I'm actually a student of whatever the greatest, best ideas are. So if you have some cool things that uh, you think that would be fun to kick around uh, with a super nerdy attorney who's also a real estate investor, email me at scott at royallegalsolutions.com. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Scott, for your time. Um, and I hope you have a great day today. Thanks. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye bye. All right. Perfect. Okay, guys. Um, so that was a great presentation by Scott Smith. Um, wanted to uh, keep.